Love can conquer anything. Hallelujah. Mm. <laughs> Not Makaratasi though. All yes, right. 911 and you'll go in. I pronounce Barack Obama now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to our channel. It's the Mona for Mamas. And today we're going to be talking about parenting 101 in diaspora. So, Sarah, first thing, first thing that jumps out at me is um, your experience with that? Tell yes. us. Yes. Now, did I get myself into it? No. Mm -hmm. You know, when I met my husband, it really wasn't i never thought about it because of his kenyan i was kenyan you know what i mean <laughs> it was just yeah it was like love can conquer anything hallelujah mm. <laughs> not makaratasi though all right <laughs> yes but i've seen people immigrants coming in here you you know the only way you'll be able to have a life yeah is to, to be allowed to work and one of the ways marrying an american yes. and so but it comes with its own risks. Yeah, I went through that. I went through, uh, people always tell me, because I was a student, I was an international student. So first of all, yeah. school was ridiculous. And then people are like, oh, so I'm to do my paper. But I've seen my friends who married a guy, at you've agreed you're going to pay him, or a girl. You've agreed you're going to pay that person at your side, and then they want more money, they want more this. You know, I'm not going to shuffle the interview if you don't give me this or that. Number two, yes. they fall in love with you. Now they don't want to let go. It's like, no, it's a wrap. Number three, which is the most annoying thing to me because I think it can be avoided, is either is the guy getting the girl pregnant. So now, an arrangement. This is what we're doing for this amount of time. Blah, blah, blah. And then you have a whole chick who's pregnant. Yes. It just seems so silly. It's, it's silly, but it happens, guys. It happens. And the other thing is, that's what I'm Kenya. They are the worst. She was a Tanzanian, and she married a Tanzanian guy. And you took Saidiana, they agreed. But this guy would literally make her pay. Like every time they had, he, he lived in DC, she lived in Jersey. He would make her pay for his flight, pay for his hotel room. Pay, like, she had a place. He could have come, come and Saidiana, Kaya, Tala, Lekwa, Couch. That she said by the end of it, you know, it's a shame. So now, assuming you've married whoever you've married, paper, mm -hmm. okay, let's talk about the real marriage. Now you have kids. Um, what are some things that you 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 feel unajua, that somebody needs to know about raising kids together in America and away from yeah. home? Uh it is difficult. The religion, mm, right? Yeah. They have to know their roots. Mm. They are Kenyans. Their yeah. parents are from Kenya. There are yeah. ways you talk to your parents. There are ways you talk to other people. You don't just call people by their first name. Mm. Have you a kids calling you by your first name? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Hubby's, Hubby's son, because I'm a stepmom. So Hubby's yes. son has us over the summers. And when he first came to us, he was like, Velma, this. And I was just like, don't call me Velma. <laughs> I got 30 something years on you. How dare you call me Velma? Why? And I learned that's just the comfort level. I mean, eventually he got to a place where he, he preferred to call me Mommy Velma, which I appreciated because mm -hmm. he got there on his own. Mm -hmm. um, so I love that. But in the beginning, it, it, it was hard for me. I had to fight. I still, I can't call my parents my name. Like Even when I introduce my mom to someone or my dad to someone, I'll be like, this is my dad. And then I'll wait for him to say his name. <laughs> important things I find about blended families is the parents yeah. that right the person you're married to so for example my mm -hmm. husband has um children outside of ours now if i'm sitting there disciplining the child and and by discipline i i don't necessarily mean because i'm not all out i'm not gonna spank somebody else's kid i just find no. that i don't have such in mind but for example if a child is doing the wrong thing you're gonna leave your plate on the table after you eat i'm gonna tell you to take your plate to the kitchen yeah. so the most important part is for him to back me up because yeah. the child has his resistance you're not my mother right and he's right. I'm not your mother. You know, I'm not mm -hmm. your biological mother. That doesn't mean we can't forge a relationship. So one thing I really respect my husband for is that he's always had my back. You know, he'll speak to his child and he'll speak to me. If he feels I'm wrong, he's going to wait later and be like, okay, babe, you know, you could handle mm -hmm. this like this. And some of those mm -hmm. times, the difference is just our culture. For example, the baby woke up one day and he wanted pancakes. Okay. So me, I know my mom used to make zillion dogos and they should drop scones. Okay. Yes. You make yes. the big flat one. So yeah. I made him and I was, I was feeling myself because I love to cook. I had some frozen like um, berries in the fridge. I made right. it up and put it on it, you know? Yes. Then he looked at me like, these are not pancakes. I was like, boy. <laughs> I was like, 
Like I just spent an hour in the kitchen right. making smiley faces on the damn pancakes so you can like them. What do you mean they're not pancakes? And, oh, they gotta be fluffy. But you know, yeah. so I had to be a grown up and pull myself back and be like, damn. For yeah. him, American, those are pancakes. The fluffy yeah. things. I know. Mm-hmm. For me mm-hmm. as a Kenyan, those are pancakes. The things that I made for him. You see what I'm saying? But yes. My hubby's in the middle and he's like, okay, babe, calm down. Okay. For him, it's not pancakes. Thank yes. you for the effort because that's what I needed to hear. I woke up early. Yes. The effort. And to him, it's like, you know, try it. It's yeah. something new. You may not know what it is, but try it. So blended families, that's you guys got to be. You got to be in one space. One space with religion. One space with education. For example, it's time to put away the tablet and go read. It's got to be both of you. It can't be one of you and not the other. You talked about the discipline and all that. And I remembered the... 911 kind of a thing. Oh Lord. <laughs> I've heard about the 911 thing before. Yeah. But it is that here, you know, you can't just discipline your child how you want. I was like, what? They're like, yeah, the kid yes. is 911 and you'll go in. And V, it's something they are taught in school. It is instilled in school. But listen, here. I wholly believe in spanking and again oh, yeah. oh, yeah. the opinion about what how they feel um I grew up on spanking and even though I didn't like it at the time I think it makes me makes me who I am today yes and there's a difference between spanking and abuse I mean have you seen yeah. the of Gabrielle on, on Netflix that was yes. terrible now that now that's right, 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 right. Yeah, but I don't yeah. tap, tap on the butt once in a while to set that child straight. So when I give you that look across from the across the room, and then there's a kid who's just yelling and screaming and nothing's going on. Then you're getting kidding. to my nerves. <laughs> and and I must say, you know, like my kids, sometimes I'll say something and they'll question me. I yeah. like that. They yeah. say, Mommy, no, she was right, she was doing this. I am not diminishing their opinions. You know what I mean? Like, come on, speak up. I want you to speak up. Yeah. But I want you to know there's a time and a place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to yes. practice my mommy look. I'm waiting for my boy to get big. Well, I can just oh, they know my eyes. <laughs> oh, Children need boundaries. Children need boundaries. Like mm-hmm. I see a lot of um, teenagers. And again, it's also maybe the cultural difference. I'm telling you, there's clothes I still can't wear in front of my father. And I'm a grown-ass woman. Even a society that's so perverted to begin with. That's my biggest fear. You go through that struggle, especially since you have a little girl who's about to be a teenager. Like, yes. My you know, daughter, when she wears something, she knows. Sometimes I'll be okay with it, but daddy's not going to be okay with it. Mm. They hit 10, your work is done. Mm. Your work is done. That teenage years go. Girl, I remember mine. I'm still recovering from my teenage years. Sorry, mommy. <laughs> I like the teamwork in raising the children. Yes, it girl. has to be. So talking about raising black kids in America, you know, especially black males. I, I'm so scared being a mother of a boy. I mean, have you seen um, the kid, Ahmad, I, I can't pronounce his name, who was shot jogging? Jogging. Like, literally, my son cannot go out and jog in the neighborhood without some people jumping on him and shooting him in plain sight with somebody else recording it and nobody knowing anything about it for over two months. How crazy is that? I tell my kids this. You are guilty until proven innocent mm. there are things you cannot do yeah. yes you can wear your hoodie but don't do that yeah yeah unfortunately the world we live in Alia has a girlfriend of hers she's white yeah. born two months apart yeah i looked at them young kids you know when they were very young and i could just tell this one has you know, the society expects so much of this one. She's already born at an advantage just based on her skin color. It has nothing to do with how smart she is. It's just she's different colored and therefore she is. That is so sad. But you have to let them know though. Because yes. No, that's true. There's a lot of people who act like, oh, no, 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 we're equally yoked. We are not equally yoked. And the more power you give to your black child understanding that we're not equally yoked, the better off they come out in life. Look at the other little girl who was shot in her house the other day, sleeping because they were looking for a gangster. You know, nobody apologizes for that. It's just, okay, so some poor mother has lost her daughter. But isn't it sad? I was watching I'm Becoming from Michelle Obama. I she need to about, watch that. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and she talked about when she went to Yale, the white mom really said, no, you cannot be roommates with this black kid, right? No way. Yes, this was in the 70s, but it's still going on now. Yes. 
let the kids know yes they are black it shouldn't have the african names oh th- that feel, that sounds so exotic oh yes it is of course it is we are exotic honey <laughs> let our children know the african i i know some kids who have no they have no idea that they are what do you advise African moms, immigrant moms, doesn't necessarily have to be an African mom, right? My favorite saying, again, sorry, I've said it a thousand videos, stay uniquely you, okay? So your name is Makoha. That's yeah. your name. Own it, walk with it. I admire Nigerian people so much because they always have their kids with the whole name, Olubukola, okay? No shame in it. And that's the, they always have the heritage no matter where they're born. Okay. Right. Another thing I like about Jamaican households. So the two households that I've noticed that you will find that when you walk into the house, it's like you're back in their country, Jamaican and Nigerian. They speak yes. their language. They speak their mother tongue. They speak with their accent. You walk into a Jamaican home, same thing. They speak their patois. They speak it like they're right there. They eat like they're back home. Because at the end of the day, your child is going to need something to pull on to something to hold on to. So every time my son watches that on the news, I want him to look and remember and then have his identity and know that he belongs to Keep telling people, look, Barack Obama kept saying, you know, they could not pronounce my name, but who doesn't pronounce Barack Obama now? Hallelujah. <laughs> who doesn't pronounce uh, Lupita Nyong'o now? Uh, oh, girl. <laughs> oh. Here's to all the Baracks and the Lupitas, okay? Guys, end of our video today. Interesting topic. Let us know if there's anything else you would like us to talk about. Yes. Like, subscribe, and share. And yes. see you next time on Mona. Mm-hmm.